a significant announcement, the Election Commission of Pakistan revealed that PPP co-chairman Asif Ali Zardari secured 411 votes, triumphing over his opponent PK MAP chairman Mahmood Khan Achakjai, who managed only 181 votes. The votes acquired by Mahmood Khan Achakzai, 119. The votes acquired by Asif Ali Zardari, 255. The electoral battle unfolded in key cities, Karachi, Lahore, Quetta, Peshawar and Islamabad, with the results consolidated at the ECP Secretariat. Out of the 1,185 total seats in the Electoral College, 92 were vacant, leaving 1,093 voters to cast their ballots. Of the 1,044 votes cast, 9 were declared invalid, resulting in 1,035 valid votes. The ECP emphasized that the official result of count on Form 7 would be prepared and forwarded to the federal government tomorrow, following the receipt of original records from presiding officers. As outgoing President Dr. Arif Alve bid farewell, he expressed gratitude for the honor of serving the people of Pakistan. In a post on his ex-account, Dr. Alvi expressed confidence in the nation's bright future. Despite the defeat, Mr. Achakjai acknowledged the fairness of the presidential election. He also called on PMLN Supremo Nawaz Sharif to temper the charged political environment within his party. I request PMLN Nawaz Sharif that he will say to his party ठीक है आपकी किसी से ना लगती होगी आपकी किसी से कदूरतें होंगी उनके अमाल आपको बुरे लगते होंगे लेकिन अब यह है कि पाकिस्तान की बेहतर यह होगा सुनर द बेटर अगर इस चार्ज पॉलिसी को संभालना है और इस मुल्क के लिए एक कंसेंसस गवर्नमेंट पाकिस्तान मुश्किल में है पाकिस्तान मुश्किल में है मैं माफी चाहता हूं मियां साहब को छोड़ के हम छोटे हैं مسائل बहुत बड़े हैं Earlier today, PTI Secretary General Omar Ayub asserted that only the public holds the authority to brand their party as anti-state, highlighting the water's choice for PTI. I have told you that you have to say that jail superintendent is a person who is a court lakpat jail ka jail superintendent. Ho. जब जेल सुप्रिंटेंडेंट अपने आप को अदालत से ज्यादा मजबूत समझने लगे और वो अंग्रेजी में उसको समझ आप कह सकते हैं कि लॉ ऑन टू हिमसेल्फ के वो अपने आप को ये समझे कि मैं ही कानून हूं और मैं ही हुकूमत हूं तो फिर उस मुल्क में ना आईन होता है ना कानून होता है वहां पे जंगल का राज होता है ऑन अ सिमिलर नोट PTI MNA Amir Dogar said that former president Zardari is being imposed on the country today Barrister Gohar Ali Khan had also criticized the election of Asif Ali Zardari as president, terming it a violation of the constitution. It's worth noting that the PTI-backed candidates supported Mr. Achakjai in the presidential polls against Mr. Zardari. In the past 24 hours, Israeli attacks have killed 82 Palestinians and injured 122, according to Gaza's health ministry. Tragically, three more children have succumbed to malnutrition and dehydration at Gaza's Al-Shifa Hospital, raising the toll from starvation to 23. Since 7 October, a total of 30,960 Palestinians have been killed, and 72,524 have been injured in Israeli attacks on Gaza. The UN Agency for Palestinians reports a 50% reduction in aid deliveries to Gaza, citing a lack of political will and security assurances amid Israeli military operations. 
In response, some nations are bypassing restrictions by air dropping food, and the United States plans to build a temporary port in Gaza to ensure aid deliveries. Gaza's government media office estimates the destruction caused by Israel to exceed $30 billion, affecting homes, facilities, and critical infrastructure. Salame Marov, head of Gaza's media office, emphasizes that 80% of homes in Gaza are now uninhabitable, with 120,000 families facing famine. The International Committee of the Red Cross condemns the conflict's toll on shared humanity, urging an urgent ceasefire in Gaza. ICRC head Mirjana Spoljurik emphasizes the need for both Israel and Hamas to respect international law, protect civilians, and facilitate the steady flow of aid into the besieged territory. A U.S. charity is loading aid onto a boat in Cyprus, preparing for the first shipment along a new maritime corridor to Gaza. Meanwhile, a spokesperson for Gaza's Hamas-run government welcomes the U.S. plan to build a temporary port, seeing it as a step in the right direction to alleviate the humanitarian catastrophe. In response to the crisis, President Biden has ordered the U.S. military to construct a pier on Gaza's coast for maritime aid shipments. The Pentagon estimates the construction process, involving 1,000 U.S. troops, will take one to two months. However, aid groups express concerns about the efficiency of this plan compared to land crossings, emphasizing the urgency of addressing Gaza's deepening famine. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has greenlit $15 billion worth of infrastructure projects in the past week, strategically strengthening support just days before the scheduled announcement of national elections. During visits to Telangana, Tamil Nadu, Odisha, West Bengal, and Bihar between Monday and Wednesday, Modi unveiled projects aimed at propelling India from the world's fifth largest economy to the third. He continues his tour with a visit to Assam on Saturday. Focusing on high growth and infrastructure development, PM Modi, seeking a third consecutive term, aims to make India a developed country by 2047. Critics argue that the announced projects are either completions or expansions of existing initiatives, with opposition leader Jairam Ramesh calling PM Modi a conjurer of lies on social media. PM Modi's spending spree, addressing unemployment concerns, precedes the election announcement, limiting his ability to introduce major schemes to pull in voters. The Congress party, PM Modi's main opponent, questions the prioritization of infrastructure over targeted welfare schemes. India, anticipating the world's largest election by May, with over 960 million voters, sees the BJP projected to secure a third consecutive term comfortably. Mr. Modi's BJP needs 272 of 543 seats to form the government. India maintains its status as the fastest growing major economy globally, with 8.4% economic growth in the three months to December, and retail inflation within the central bank's target band of 2% to 6%.